Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurazo here. Come at you guys with another five cards to have in your trade binder for June. Now you guys have been heavily requesting this series in the comment section of Marco Watches, uh, news videos, and we actually hit the like goal on that video, which I was not expecting at all at 110 likes. I said 100, and I thought that was overbearing, but you guys did it, so thank you guys for supporting that and loving this series, because I love making it. It does take some research to do, because I try to give you guys the best picks that I could, and I'm really glad that you guys are patient for this series. Now, if you're buying any of these cards I'm telling you, advising you to get on TCG Player, please use my fill link down in the description below. It helps out the channel to no additional cost to you. Uh, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and if you want to become a YouTube channel member, I always appreciate it. and thank you to those who are already YouTube channel members. Now, the first card that I advise you guys to get is Comic Hand Secret Rare out of Dragons of Legend. Now, if you guys don't know what this card does, it's essentially a snatch deal on crack because it also not only takes your opponent's monster, but you also can attack directly with it as long as you control Toon World. Now, the reason why I'm telling you guys to grab this card is because for an old high rarity card like this, that's not only a tune card, but actually played in the deck and pretty good, it's only about $3 for a first edition secret. However, they do spike up quite quickly uh, to about $8, $9. Now, the reason why I'm telling you guys to get this is because once we see more tune reprints, because tune chaos is due to get reprints at any moment now, I really think their time is going to be up very soon. A lot of people are going to want to build tunes because it's a very fun deck. They're going to look at the deck and they're going to see that they can get secret rare comic hands, quite high rarity, for basically McDonald's money, and they're going to go grab this. I also think that Dragons of Legends 2 is a very underrated set because it wasn't as good as Dragons of Legends 1. Take it from someone who also played during that time. Dragons of Legend 1 had great stuff like Fire and Ice Hand, which back then people actually wanted uh hit, uh, funny enough. But... Dragons of Legend 2 just didn't have that oof, like Dragons of Legends 1, Dragons of Legends 3. So it's just, since it's not as popular, a lot of the singles, uh, you know, are very low. Meaning that it's basically a gold mine for a good buyout. And I think Comic Hand is gonna be, should be that card. Uh, I would get at least a playset. However, if you want to get six copies, that's not a bad idea either. Um, I should think this card's gonna go up to at least $10, $12. Uh, over time, it is way too more low than it ever should be. Now it can go up to about twenty twenty five dollars, but I can definitely guarantee that this card should be, is going to be double digits, uh, and quite soon. So get your copies while you can. Now the second card I have here is another iconic card, and that is Victory Dragon from Shonen Jump promos. Now a lot of people love collecting Shonen Jump promos because if you guys don't know what those are, you used to get a uh, Shonen Jump magazine, and I, funny enough, did not get it for the card. I got to read the manga back in my day because they had amazing stuff to read every um you know week right uh and the card was just kind of a bonus uh to be honest with you guys the, uh, if we take the nostalgia glasses off here uh most of these cards actually weren't that good uh i think quasar in my opinion was probably my favorite but the reason why i'm telling you guys to get victory dragon from it is not only is it a very iconic card uh that you know we only have a limited amount of Shonen uh, Jump promos out there, but near mints go from $12 to $30 quite quickly within a page or two on TCG Player. And this card is not very plentiful on other sites uh, either. A lot of people also love this card because of its design, and even though they're hard to get virgins, people prefer this copy. Now, I think that you guys should get at least one copy of this card if you want to get a place that that's up to you. But this card always goes up a little bit overall in time, and I think it's a great time capsule card where you shouldn't expect immediate money, but you should expect it over time. Like if you look back in about five years, six years, seven years, you know, maybe you need to sell uh, some, some cards, you know, for either your kids or any type of other future endeavors. This is the kind of card that's you don't have to worry about going down, especially with how limited the quantity is. It can only go higher from here. So be advised that when you get this card, you're not going to get immediate money. Uh, people also do like it because of the effect, but I don't think I'm pretty sure you can't even play it. So, yeah. Now the third card that I advise that you guys should have in your trade binder is Meteor Black Comet Dragon. Now, I'm talking about the OG version out of uh, Invasion Vengeance. Uh, however, I will be talking about the Ghost of the Past 2 card. Now, this card was about 35 to 35 40 dollars before it got reprinted in Ghost of the Past 1. And I actually had this card um, in my top 5 cards to get from Ghost of the Past. 
and it was about 50 cents, maybe maybe like 45 or something, I rounded up. But this card from Ghost of the Past, mind you, is already about two, two and a half dollars, approaching the three dollar mark, which is pretty great since this card was not only mass printed, but it's only been roughly a year since that set has dropped. Now, I'm telling you guys to get the OG version because the OG version is about three, four dollars as well, and people would rather get an OG version than a reprint, especially if the reprint is also the same rarity. And I, I would, and I'm going to make an argument that core set ultra rares look better than reprint ultra rares uh that's just an opinion though but collectors are also going to want the og version now the fact that the og version is not even hitting like seven eight dollars boggles my mind but this card does quickly go up to the ten dollar mark now i'm telling you guys to grab this because as a collector card it can easily reach something like ten like fifteen twenty dollars in the future as well as being an iconic card and red eyes could play this card as well although dragoon is 10 out of 10 times better. Uh, depending on the extra deck space, though, I have seen this played in that deck. Although, I'm not telling you guys to get from that deck because there's just not enough players to uh, fulfill a um, increase of this card. Uh, I'm telling you guys to get mostly for collector reasons. Now, I would get OGs, but if you want to get Ghost of the Pass as well, a few copies of that as an investment might not be bad either, but the real money is in the Ultra Rares. So, I would grab those while you can. You could also expect some immediate money out of those. Uh, if not higher, I would recommend at least a playset. Uh, if you want to get more, that is up to you. Now, the fourth card I have for my five cards I've been trade buyers is actually Ghost Rare Cyber Dragon. Now, a lot of people are undervaluing the Ghost Rares from Ghost of the Past 2 because not only did we have the Factory era where a lot of people had the Ghost Rares like Ghost Rare Dark Magician Girl before we even got, you know, the set in the TCG, you know, a few weeks before, but... The set's also very mass printed, so we have a plentiful amount of all the Ghost Rares out there. Uh, to the point where as a vendor, uh, people don't actually even want to sell me their Ghost Rares because they'll look at the full retail and they won't even sell it for that, much less to, to a vendor or even someone uh, buying it for like their collection even. So that's how bad the Ghost Rares are. However, I still think there's a lot of value to have in these Ghost Rares. And the reason why I'm choosing Cyber Dragon is because at $78, not only is it a very iconic card, but it's also played in past formats, and Cyber Dragons is a very popular deck. Uh, Cyber Dragons not only being a popular deck uh, for OTKing and as a off-meta pick, but they're actually getting an awesome card that is called Clockwork Machine, which makes all uh, monsters on the field a machine. All machine monsters gain 500 attack, um, and I believe defense. I'm not too sure about the defense part, but... They also, um, you know, you could go to Comeritech, and it really helps Cyber Dragons out in that deck. So with the new support coming in, if Cyber Dragons get more popular, people are going to look at, uh, you know, high rarity Cyber Dragon. They're going to be like, wow, we could get the alternate or ulti from OTS, and that's pretty cheap at $100, $105. But we can get an awesome Ghost Rare for $78. You know, sign me up for that. And I think these Ghost Rares can easily hit $200, maybe $250. Uh, when we get the new support and eventually over time uh, It's also again played in older formats as well as collectors just want them to have although collectors are very stern with Ghost of the Past 2 because if you guys know the product quality is really bad if you actually flip on the back It's like all the little um, you know uh, chrome not chromosomes <laughs> uh, Molecules on the back had an orgy because there's cum splatters on the back of the cards for these ghost rares sometimes so the product quality isn't that great and that's another thing driving down these ghost rares although there still are ghost rares and the front does look pretty nice on quite a few of them so i would get these go this ghost rare while you can because this card could go up for a multitude of reasons and 78 dollars is just way too low now the last card that i actually have for your five cards to have in your trade binder is super rare hita from ots now the reason why i'm telling you guys to grab this is because all the Charmers recently, Starlight Rare, have been getting bought out, and there's a lot of uh, Star, uh, not Starlight Rare hype, but Charmer hype uh, currently. And Starlight Rare Hita, which I actually mentioned to grab at 170 a lot earlier, uh, and $200 respectively, actually got bought out to about four dollars to $500 uh, recently. And uh, unlike all the other Charmers that have some type of Ultra Rare, like Area, Asa, uh, you know, the Wind One, um, and all that, Hita actually doesn't have an ultra rare in like a reprint tin. And people actually don't know that. So the highest rarity of Hita that you can get that's not the Starlight Rare is actually the Super Rare. And at 3 to $4, it's pretty good being one of the most generic 
uh, charmer since a lot of people can make it in order if if ash is popular because if ash is popular in the format you can summon your own ash make it and then take your opponent's ash uh, it's also good in a lot of fire decks like if salaman great become popular as well etc etc now the reason why i'm also telling you guys to grab this is not only because people don't know that so if someone wants a hollow charm uh, hita they only have one option but this card does not have as many near mint copies on the market when I when you actually sort from near mint on TCG player uh, you actually see that it only has about 24 copies yeah there's some people who have you know a couple copies here and there and all that but this card could easily hit to 10 you know we've seen super rares hit 20 to 30 dollars a collectible charmer like Hita is very popular as well as being from a tournament pack uh, I would get this card while you can actually uh, I would actually also recommend getting a lot of the other Charmers in Ultra form. They're pennies on the dollar, especially Area uh, for Spike, because I think Ultra Area can go up as well. Uh, so I would get those cards while you can. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this 5 cards having your trade binder. Uh, leave a like if you guys did and subscribe. And let me know what you guys think is some of the best picks from this um, you know, video. And I will see you guys on tomorrow's live stream. I always stream around 10 Central. Um you know on Tuesdays so be there be square uh, if you guys are wondering my hands going upside down I actually have a cute little kitty over here that just came so uh, yeah uh, I will see you guys in the next video peace